the different types of relationship. So candidate key is a subset of super key. The first one is all about the cardinality ratio and the second one is participation. Teacher is one entity and student is another entity. What is the relationship? Teachers. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on data modeling. So guys, what do I have in this session for all of you? Let's check the agenda. This is going to be a very, very interesting topic. Definitely you will like it. The first topic that I have is all about different types of keys. Scooter key, car key, money key, all different types of keys I have. So yes, I will be discussing the different types of keys which I will be using in the DPMS. Along with that, I will also discuss the different types of relationship what kind of relationship a boy and the girl is having. No, not that kind of. I'm going to discuss the different kind of relationship between two entities. All right, so I'll be speaking about the entity set also along with that. And then I have uh, roles and structure constraints. That's going to be one of the important point. And the most important topic and interesting thing which I have in the session for all of you is cardinality ratio. So guys, let's start the session with the first topic that I have is all about keys. What exactly this keys is all about? So first of all, where do we use this key? So do we use this key for a car, or a door, or a scooter? No, not that key. So guys, the first thing that you need to remember is this table. I have already told you that we store all our data in the form of table. Imagine this is a beautiful table. What kind of table is this? Beautiful table. The name of this table is student. Okay, so here, the first column that I have here is Serial number, okay. You can also treat the serial number as student ID, okay. Yes, ID is what I will call it as. So fine, the next column is name and age, then phone number. Imagine like this. This is the data that I have. So I have, uh, uh, let me just take, yes, one, zero, yes, two, zero, yes, three, zero, okay. So name is ABC, uh, second name is Rama because I like Rama and uh, Second, third name, so let's take Sita, okay? So three names I have, so fine. Age, let's take 18, 19, 20. So phone number, let me not reveal. So I have the four numbers of all these people. Now, it's very important. Imagine I need to access Rama, okay? So in this scenario, if I just say, I want the complete details of Rama, you will just say, sir, access by its name. But remember, suppose in my class to Rama, okay? So in this case, what shall I do? I want to access the data of this Rama, this is who is in the second row, but I have two Ramas. How do I access? So for that, any one of the values should be unique, like how you people have got the student ID or from the university, you have got the register number. So which is unique for all the students those who are there in the university. So in the same way, whenever I'm storing the data in the table, one of the values should be unique. So that value is what I will call it as a key. When I have a key, I have different types of key. The first key is what I will call it as a super key. Second one is candidate key and the primary key. So this is what you need to remember. So fine. So what is this primary key? Let's go from the bottom. So guys, Primary key is a unique key. It should not be null. Suppose imagine this serial number. I will make it as a primary key. So primary key in the sense two things you should remember. The first thing it should be unique. The value whatever you are storing. It should be unique. You cannot repeat the values here. The second thing it should not be null. So that is the second thing that you should remember. Not null in the sense you cannot leave this column empty. So that is what I will call it as a primary key. Simple formula. If you just write these two, so that's remember, that's a final for primary key. That's what you need to remember with respect to the primary key. So fine, we are done with the primary key. The next one is what I have candidate key. So candidate key in the sense what? Before understanding the candidate key, it is important to understand the concept of super key. So fine. So imagine I have a group of attributes which helps me to identify the row uniquely. What is the meaning of it, sir? Group of attributes in the sense what? So I will not consider only serial number. So I will consider serial number, name and age. So these three things, I will consider it as a super key. So all the three values should be unique. So this group of 
three attributes, whatever I have, I will treat this as a super key to uniquely identify any row. So that's what I need to call it as a super key. But what is this candidate key? Super key I have got, but the candidate key is a subset. Subset in the sense, imagine this is a set. So candidate key is a subset of super key. That is what you need to remember. Subset in the sense, any part of this super key, it could be only these two or it could be only this two. It is a subset, some part of this super key is what I will call it as a candidate key. So hope you understood the concept of three different keys. So hope I made it very simple for you. Moving forward to the next concept that I have, very interesting topic that's all about the relationship. So what is the meaning of relationship types? So guys, you all know that we have discussed the concept called entities. Imagine I have two different entities. The association between two different entities, entity number one and entity number two. So the association between two different entities is what I will call it as a relationship. Always I will be representing the entity with the rectangle and the relationship with the help of diamond symbol. That's what you need to remember, rhombus symbol. Okay, so this is how I will be representing the concept or I will be representing the association between two different entities. That's what I will call it as a relationship. Whenever I have, so observe a set of relationships of similar type, then I will call that as a relationship set. I repeat, a set of relationship, more than one relationship of similar type, I will call that as a relationship set. That's what you need to remember. So guys, so I observe one more thing I have here. So whatever the attributes that I have for the entities, so these attributes are, I will call it as descriptive attributes. So that's the most important thing. One more thing that you need to remember when I'm discussing the concept of relationship. So fine, all those things are fine. Now actually the picture starts. So guys, observe what is the meaning of roles. Let me come to the structural constraints in the next part. Now, let me speak about the roles. What is this role? I'm a teacher. I'm performing the role of teacher. You're a student. You're performing the role of student. In the same way, even in the ER diagram, even in the relationship, one entity will be performing one role. So we will be assigning the name for that particular role. So that is what you need to remember with respect to this role. Each entity type has participated in a relationship type. So plays a particular role in the relationship. When we are having the association between two entity, one particular entity will be performing one particular role. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the role. So fine, coming back to the structural constraint. When I'm discussing the structural constraint, so you need to remember these two things. This is a very, very important thing, so which you need to remember. The first one is all about the cardinality ratio and the second one is participation. So participation, I will be discussing it in the next session, but when it comes to the cardinality ratio, it's very, very simple. Let me explain that in today's session. So what exactly cardinality ratio? When it comes to the cardinality ratio, we have different types of cardinality ratio. The first one that we have is one to one. What is the meaning of one to one? Imagine this is the entity and one more entity I have. Imagine this is the student entity. What is the entity name that I have here? I have student entity and that one I will call it as a teacher entity. Okay, so teacher entity. So fine. So what is the relationship name that I have? Teachers. Okay, so what is the relationship that I have? Teachers. Let me just interchange the entity names. I can also do it like this, but still, so it will be easy for you to understand. So first, let me just uh, make it. Okay, so this is our teacher entity. Okay, let me make this as student entity. Okay, so now let's understand this. What happens? You all know, okay, remember this. Uh, I will be taking the same example for all the different slides, okay? So teacher is one entity and student is another entity. What is the relationship? Teachers. So what is this one? Sir, it's a typing mistake. It's okay, sir, no problem. No, it is not typing mistake. That's the cardinality ratio, which I'm trying to explain to you. So observe one to one, one to one. What happens? One teacher teaches one student. That's what you need to remember, okay? This is one different entity. That is one different entity. So what is the relationship? Teaches. One teacher teaches one student. That's what you need to remember. But when it comes to the next cardinality ratio, that is one to many. What happens? Here I have teacher. 
one teacher teaches many students i repeat one teacher teaches many students in the same way observe here i have many to one so one teacher is it no many teacher teaches one student sir how it is possible sir at a time all the teachers are teaching no for you how many teachers are teaching many teachers are teaching different different subjects so that is the example that you need to observe here all right so i have teacher so how many teachers i have many teachers different types of different entities i have many teacher teaches one student in the same way guys observe this is the many to one relationship so cardinality ratio so what is this cardinality ratio one to many in the same way i have one to one so three different types of cardinality ratio that we have and also so can you guess one more combination that we have so you understood one to one so fine so the next one is one to many the next one is many to one can we also have many to many of course we can also have many to many cardinality ratio many teacher teaches many students so that can also be possible this is the different types of cardinality ratio that we have so with this i have come to an end of this session so in the next session i will be discussing about the participation so till then take care bye bye